Okay, so my name is Cristina. I'm the co-founder and the chief operating officer of Virius Risk. It's a company that develops software to help other companies build secure software and individual developers to have a self-service of security requirements for their software. But enough about me, because you are the protagonist of this talk. Who in this audience wants to build software that is resilient to cyber attacks? Yes, yes, that's the right answer. We all do, right? Yeah, we all do. And the good news is that it's, uh, it's in your hands. You are the heroes. You are the heroes of making your software secure. And somehow, you already know how to do it. I'll tell you about it. The problem is that we are thinking about this cybersecurity business all wrong, in my opinion. We, we conceive it as an afterthought. We conceive it as, as something that can be laid out on top of your software once it's finished. So it's like waiting for divine forces coming from outer space to tell you how your software has to be secure. Building, you, you buy a package of security software after your application is built, and the package builds a parameter, perimeter around you, on top of you, everywhere, and makes it magically secure. Well, that's not how it works. Um, the, let me tell it's to, uh, to, to hope for some outer space solutions to make your software secure, it's messy in the best of cases. As we say in Spanish, it's a bit of a chapuza. You don't, you don't walk around doing that. You embed it at the beginning before there's even a line of code even written. Because not all software can be hacked. If you build a software that is well thought, that is well designed, that is robust, that software is impenetrable. Let me tell you a story. Before we, we founded Irius Risk, we were, we were working in a cybersecurity company, consultancy. Our jobs, I was in business development, we had security analysts doing all day long pen testing of applications that were already built and that they were dying to go into the market as fast as possible. And so one day, one Friday evening at the pub, I was asking a security analyst in the company, so how does your week look like for, for, for uh, work-wise? And he said, said, well, I have this massive application to pen test, and I had a look today, briefly, diagonally, as we call it, and I already know what's wrong with it, and they are not going to like it. And I said, why? Because they want it to go into the market in three weeks. And the problem is that they have to rebuild it from scratch. I was like, why? He said, because they don't have bags, they have design flaws. That made me think, so I took the chance to make an experiment when an insurance company came to us saying, we haven't started building this application, it's going to be awesome, it's going to be very innovative in the market, so, I want you to book time in four months to do the pen test of it. We will have two months to, to fix everything you tell us to fix, and then go into the market two months later. And I say, oh, hold on, how about you give us your, your developers, your architects? And I put it together in a room with a whiteboard with the security analyst, and we design it from a scratch before there's even a line of code written all together. So that's what we did. We got into the room. We spent four hours there of a session, and the developers, I don't know, they were saying, so we are going to reset the password by sending an email with the password in clear text. Those were the times. And, and the security analyst, no, no, you have to send a unique link with a good random token. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So how are you going to secure this communication between this component, that other component? Well, we don't think about that. Well, you, you have to encrypt it. Okay, we'll do that. By the time the application came four months later, we found exactly half of the vulnerabilities that we were used to find in a software. 
hulls. They took not two months, but two weeks to fix them. And that product came into the market a month and a half before expected. OK, who in this audience is as old as me as to remember installing a Slackware from a floppy disk in the early 90s? Come on, don't be ashamed. Age is experience, and experience is a degree. Yeah, so now, free open source software runs the world. It is in the most critical systems of the world. It's in the state defenses. It's everywhere in the business. It's at the base of the software stack of every company. Now more than ever, we need to secure, to, to, that we have the social responsibility of making our software secure. It's ethical. That we all study, we have to make good, secure software for the good of the humankind. But that's true. Why? Because it's not only in businesses, state defenses, and, and uh, spaceships, it's in life itself. We need to be responsible. It's in our hands to make secure software. It's not going to come from outer space. We need to do it well by design, robust. So yeah, for me, Endesa, that's an energy company here in Spain, the largest one, is not an energy company. It's a software company. They might be developing 10,000 applications a year. The, the, the largest medical devices company in the world has 2,500 developers working for them. So it's not really a medical device company, is it? It's a software company there. Software is eating the world. And attackers know that. And they know they go for software vulnerabilities. Why? Because they know that applications are the weakest defenses in any business. Moreover, right now they have a financial benefit coming direct from their attacks. Why bother, let's put as an example, downloading the database of users of Ashley Madison to sell it into a dodgy broker in the dark web, and then, that's just dirty. Just let's hack cryptocurrencies. OK, so this is only going to get worse. Why? Because we are only going to keep on producing more and more software, aren't we? This is not going anywhere. So it's not only the quantity of the software we produce or the attacker incentives. It's the complexity of the software we are building. The more complex, the more space, the more room for mistakes, for flaws, vulnerabilities we are creating. The attack surface increases. And the secure cybersecurity market came up with all this amazing software that we buy, we all buy, we all fall for it, to secure the software that we already built and that it's finished and done. Well, that has two very dangerous implications. One is that all software can be hacked and that security comes from outer space from somewhere else, some other specialist that is in another field than, than yours. Developers, security analysts, there's a whole chiasm in the middle. There's a big space between the two of them. Well, this is not true. Robust software cannot be hacked. And security is something you build from a start. Let me draw a uh, uh, similarity and analogy between the safety in the physical world and security in the intangible world of software. Why we are not worried about a huge storm blowing out this building right now? Because we already know that when this building was, was, was planned, they thought about the historical maximum wind blows in Bilbao. They thought about the strength of the materials. They thought about the length of the beams to hold the ceiling. Well, that's very obvious. 
We cannot believe, we won't believe that at any point we called in a builder and said, build us a conference room, the builder has a, a, a go at it, and then we call a separate company to make it safe. Well, that's what companies are making, are doing with software right now. We have to think security from the start as another property of the software. Because 50% of the vulnerabilities enters before there's even a line of code written. And this is in your hands. So how do we do this? You already know. Because you know perfectly how to do a performance software with good quality, don't we? We all do good quality. We don't build software and then we buy a package to make it quality-like. So if you know how to do this, and you do, because I know you do, you already have security in there. It's another property. We call it software secure by design, and the activity the, to do it, it's threat modeling. Regulation is coming from everywhere, from the NIST. They say, they say up there, use forms of risk modeling, such as threat modeling, attack modeling, attack surface mapping. Software secure by design. Here, the National Cybersecurity Strategy, the White House, the Biden law, calls it resilient by design. And the European Union with the Cyber Resilience Act proposal that it's coming up now. It says, not only this, this shift left, shift left security into your code, well, it's start left, start before there's, there's code written. That is all for us to think. That is no magic boxes where you can put your code and make it safe, then make it secure. There's not an a squad like we used to be, the pen testers, coming and save our code. There's no cavalry coming for you, because you are the cavalry, and it's in your hands. You are the heroes. Okay, thank you very much.